Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. You know, I love trying out new things, and the Linux community is full of creative people that are constantly creating new things, so I always have something new to try out. And in today's video, I am going to try out the Cosmic Desktop from System76. And that was a bombshell news announcement when they announced, essentially, that they are forking GNOME. Okay, they're not forking GNOME. A lot of people, they read the news like that, but that's totally not what they're doing. They're creating an extension on top of GNOME that transforms it and gives it additional functionality and also gives them more control over the feature set. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you guys the Cosmic Desktop by System76 that will debut in June in Pop! OS 2104 when it comes out, but you're going to see what it looks like today so far at this point in development in this video. So let's dive right in. All right, so here I am with Pop! OS 21.04. And no, I didn't go into a time machine and download it from the future to show you guys, although if I had a DeLorean, I would totally do that. What I actually did was I installed the most recent stable version of Pop! OS, which is version 2010, and I did a clean install of 2010 on my ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 1, which is the machine I'm recording this footage from, and then I went to the terminal and I executed a one-line command that would upgrade me to the development version, and that is how I upgraded to 21.04. Now, I definitely don't recommend that you follow along with me and also upgrade your machine to 21.04 because it's not final. It's expected to come out in June, so we have a while to go yet. It's not going to be something that you would want to install on any production system. And if you do decide to upgrade your machine to 21.04, then I am not responsible for any breakages that you may experience. Then again, upgrading to 21.04 might be a great idea if you want to help the System76 developers test the code before release, and I'm sure they would be very happy if you decided to do that. So if you have a test machine, or any machine that doesn't have anything on it that you care about, it might be something fun to try out. And that's what I'm doing right here. After I upgraded my laptop to this new development version, the first thing I saw was this humongous bar on the bottom of the screen. And that might be a big surprise for some of you because there hasn't been a panel in any version of Pop! OS so far. This is the very first time that we have ever seen a bar or a dock in Pop! OS since the distribution first came out. And seeing that dock told me that immediately I was using the new Cosmic interface by the Pop! OS developers which is the name that they have given their extension or their layer on top of GNOME that they're building. It's still GNOME underneath. They're not developing their own desktop environment. But what they are doing is they are building what's kind of like a shell on top of GNOME to have more control over the user experience, which I will talk a little bit more about later on. Now, for me personally, I don't really like docs in GNOME. The whole design of GNOME is to be dock-free, so that does go against the design of GNOME, and my opinion has always been, if you need a dock for your workflow, then GNOME is probably not for you, because again, that seems to go against the design of GNOME. But then again, the developers of Pop! OS, they did some research, and they found that the majority of their users was actually installing a dock. So I guess if you can't beat them, you may as well join them. But anyway, let's go ahead and explore the Cosmic Desktop and see what it looks like at this point in development. Just keep in mind that anything you see here can and probably will change before the final release in June, so none of the opinions that I'm going to share with you are final. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is press the super key, and what that used to do is bring up the activities overview, which has actually been renamed to workspaces. We see that right here. If I click on that, that's actually what would have appeared when you press the super key in the past. And in fact, here's some footage of what this used to look like in 2010, the current version. You press the super key. It gives you an overview of all the applications that are open on that workspace. And then you can switch between applications just by clicking on one. 
And then to switch to another one, you can press the super key again and click on a different app. Now, arguments can be made whether or not this is actually the most efficient way to change between applications. But for me, that's something that I've become accustomed to. And you know what? I have mixed feelings about this because I do like the fact that it brings up the launcher. What I could do is start typing the name of an application that I have installed. And then I could launch the application right from there without even needing to use the mouse. And that works pretty well. And I do like the application launcher quite a bit. You used to access this same menu in previous versions by holding the super key, aka the Windows key. And while you hold that down, you press forward slash and it appears. If you go up here to the tiling icon, more on that later, you can see that the launcher is still listed as that shortcut. Again, this is a development version. There's all kinds of things that they need to change. They're still working on it. But we can see the previous keyboard shortcut listed right here. Now for me, I actually prefer the activities overview now called workspaces to show up on the screen when I hit the super key. But I do like the launcher quite a bit because in my opinion, it's a heck of a lot better than the default GNOME launcher, which looks similar to this. You click on applications. It takes up the entire screen. And this isn't a System76 or Pop! OS thing. This is a GNOME thing. The application launcher in GNOME has taken up the entire screen for the entire life of GNOME 3. And in my personal opinion, I don't feel that there's any good reason whatsoever for an application launcher to take up the entire screen because that actually hides what you're working on. It takes you out of your workflow to show you a list of applications. I've never understood why several operating systems have decided that's a good idea. But now, with the application launcher, that's not really a problem because it does not take me away from what I'm working on. It just pops up a simple window right here, and I just type what I want to launch, and I launch it. So the application launcher is awesome. It's not new. It was introduced in the previous version, if I remember correctly, or maybe even the one before that. And one of the things that I like about the Pop! OS application launcher is that it helps me avoid the GNOME application launcher, which takes up the entire screen. If I bring up the settings here, we have a desktop section right here in settings, which is pretty cool. And I like this because what this does is it actually consolidates desktop related settings into one menu. So we have background here at the beginning, and then we have the desktop tab. And right here, we have an option to change the super key back to workspaces. So if I click this right here and then I press the super key, it restores the previous behavior. So even though they've changed the default of what the super key does, they still leave it up to you to decide what happens when you press it. And I could even set it to applications, which will bring up the application launcher if I like that kind of thing. But either way, you have control over what that does. And by default, it's going to bring up the launcher as you see here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that several things are listed as to do's. So what we can see from this is a few things that the Pop! OS developers plan on doing in the future before this comes out, which will give you a good idea of the roadmap. So I'm not going to bother with anything here that is marked to do because it's most likely not going to work. And of course, we have some options for the top bar as well. We could choose whether or not to show the workspaces button. And we can also hide the applications button as well. We could change the position of the date and time, which is right here. So we get some customization there as well. Now the minimize button is enabled by default. And when it comes to GNOME in general, that's disabled by default. So they have restored that. You can also enable the Maximize button as well. But I don't think there's any reason to enable the Maximize button because you could do essentially the same thing by just double clicking on the title bar. You can also go to Appearance. And there's nothing really new here. We have a light theme and a dark theme. And in my case, it defaulted to dark theme. I don't know if that's because it retained the previous setting before I upgraded or if that's the new default. But either way, you can actually customize that. So fans of dark themes will be pleased to see that here as an option. But we also have some options for the dock. So if you're like me and you are not a fan of docks in general, 
You could just turn it off. Now it's gone. I'll leave it on for now. You can also choose to automatically hide the dock. And if you enable that, what that means is that if a window gets close to the dock, it just moves out of the way, which is great because that means you won't lose screen real estate by having the dock on the screen. It's only going to occupy the screen when that's enabled, when there is not a need for screen real estate, basically if a window is not in the way. If I move the window away from the bottom edge, it comes back. If I maximize the window, then it goes away. So you get the idea. Personally, I would actually change this verbiage to intelligently hide the dock because historically, in most operating systems, the verbiage automatically hide dock or hide panel, whatever it is, usually means that the panel or dock is going to always be hidden until you move the mouse cursor to the bottom edge. So I would change this verbiage right here so it doesn't confuse anyone because when I first saw this, I thought that meant that the dock would always be hidden until I moved my mouse cursor down here, which is not how it works. It's intelligently hiding the dock, so there's that. And if I was going to use a panel, then I would actually want this enabled because why not? If a window is in the way, then the dock gets out of the way. And we also have some more to-dos marked here as well that I'm not going to cover in this video. But what we can also do is change the size of the dock. Personally, I think that medium is a little bit too large. So I could actually go to small and then medium, large, or I could set it to a custom size if I'd like. And I could go completely crazy and have it be super large if I'd like or super small. But I'm going to leave it on medium. And another thing that we can do is we can change where the dock is actually shown. I can put it on the left side so fans of Unity back in the day might like this because that's where the panel was in Unity. I can also move it to the right side as well. You get the idea. If I go to workspaces, we could set a dynamic or fixed number of workspaces. So basically the same as before. We have some to do's for how multi monitors are handled. And here a workspace picker is mentioned, but everything underneath it is marked to do. And my understanding is that they are going to implement new features for workspaces. I think I may have heard the ability to name workspaces, which is something that I've wanted for a very long time. I really hope they do that, but you get the idea. We have some options here and you can customize the new environment. Now I'm going to disable this option right here to automatically hide the dock. Just leave it at the default. And we should talk about tiling. Tiling is this icon right here. It's currently not enabled. You'll notice in the icon that these little rectangles here, which are supposed to represent application windows, are basically over top of one another. But if I click on this and enable tiling, then what that means is we have tiling. So if you weren't already aware of what tiling is, it basically speaks for itself. We can see all the applications that are on the screen when tiling is enabled. Now, what's interesting to me is that the panel is still enabled, even though I have enabled tiling. One of the main benefits of tiling is that you always know what's on the screen at any one time, and it makes great use of your screen real estate. So I would argue that a panel is probably not necessary when you have tiling enabled, but that's pretty easy to fix though, because I could just simply enable auto hide like I had before. And now the panel is out of the way, which is probably all the better when you have tiling enabled. Now I've gone over tiling in Pop! OS in previous videos. I will cover it again when Pop! OS 2104 is final come June, but already we can see that there's quite a few new features here and the overlay that they have created on top of GNOME, their extension, Cosmic as they call it, it seems to be going in a really great direction. And you know what? I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to see what it's like when it's done and what some of the new features are going to be once they have them implemented. I am very excited for Pop! OS 2104 when it launches in June. I can't wait to see what the finished version of the Cosmic Desktop looks like once they have that done. 
What did you think of the Cosmic Desktop so far as featured in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say about it. And if you like this video, click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. And thanks for watching.